Once we've created a spline shape, such as the one that you see in front of you, we really need to start getting into what the component parts are of that shape in order to be able to edit it and understand it better as well. So I have before me a shape that's already been pre-created. I could have created this, but just by coming into Create 2D Shapes Line, making sure it was set to initial type and drag type, and just going around and sort of randomly creating sort of shapes like this. But to be honest with you, this looks much better because it looks more like the floor plan of an actual building. And what I want to do is I want to just talk about what this is actually made up from because, you know, polygons are made up from various different component parts and so are splines. To access those component parts, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the object and I'm going to go to the Modify tab over here. And the first thing you'll notice is there aren't quite as many options as there are for polygons which is you know, probably a good thing. What I've got is I've got vertices, which are very, very similar to uh, polygon vertices in the fact that they are the points that make up the corners. And if I go to my Move tool as well, they can be moved around and repositioned and what have you. So there you go. I've now created a very strange shaped apartment. Just Control Z and undo that a couple of times. I can create or I can select a segment which is any point in between two vertices. So I can select a segment there or one there or one there or I can select multiple segments at any one time. Yeah. So we've got multiple segments there and I could even move these. Oop, there we go. Or I could create the line or select the whole of the spline at any one time. And there we go. So really, nice and simple, nice and easy, three points there, vertices, segments, and the whole spline. Another thing that you might find interesting as well when you're working with this is you can just select two vertices on a spline, hit the delete, and get rid of them. And I can start to work with these single vertices and maybe make things a little bit more interesting by maybe just smoothing things off a little bit. So let's say, for example, this end of the living room area, we want some curved walls to appear here. We've decided that would look a lot nicer. So what I'm going to do is I will select both of those vertices and I'm going to scroll down in my tool section here. And what you'll see is we've got a fillet. We have a chamfer, but we also have a fillet as well. So I'll click on fillet and I could type a number in. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to left click and I'm going to drag until I get what I think is a nice looking corner. And I could do the same here as well. I could make a really big corner just to open up um, this end of the building. Do note though that as soon as you let your finger off, this fillet goes back to being zero. So if I want to undo that and get rid of it, what I'm going to have to do is to make that decision straight away so that I can press Control Z. Because one thing I didn't think of is that maybe this is the corner that's going to have the kitchen in it. So maybe I don't want that to be as aggressive as sort of that, although that does look beautiful. Maybe I just want a slightly rounded corner just there. Yeah, so that's going to be quite nice. Uh, maybe I want some of the ends here to all have the same fillet on them. So I'll go around and I'll do that. You see, so fillet and I'll left click and I'll just put a small fillet radius on them there. So you can see that things are starting to soften up a little bit more on the inside of this building. Maybe I want to put similar sorts of fillets all the way all the way around here just to sort of soften things up a little bit. Again, they don't have to be very large because we don't have the room for it. So I'll just left click, drag and hold. And there you can see we've made some fairly sort of important changes. What happens though if I decided, well actually, I want these to be back together again. Well what I can do then is I can do a fuse and a weld and I would need to reposition, so I'll go to top and I'll turn on my grid, reposition this line. So I'll reposition it here just sort of hand and eye, just a little bit. And then I'll come back to my perspective view, pressing T and P there to swap in between the two. And I'm now left with a slightly strange looking vertex here. Before this was a corner edge, it was just like this one, just here. 
that's corner edge vertex but this one looks slightly different and that's because what we've got is we've got some bezier handles on here well how did they appear well there are several different types of bezier uh, or types of vertex that you can have that will define the type of spline that you've got if I right click over this vertex and uh, my graphics card finally gives me what I want and redraws it properly uh, let's see there we go we've got these options here on the um, top left hand one called uh, bezier bezier corner and smooth so if I set that to corner we're now back to the linear line that we started with before which is all well and good or I can right click again and my, ver oh, my graphics card is playing silly what's it's I got an option here where I can say bezier and what that's done is it's created this influence handle that I'm going to now need to grab hold of one of the green parts of that and control the smoothing of that line. All looks a little bit wibbly wobbly. This looks quite sort of jagged, this edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my interpolation and set it to adaptive. And you can see here that looks a lot smoother now. And I can pick up that vertex we can just sort of play around with the edge as much as we want. Now, say this curve isn't giving us quite what we're looking for. Say, for example, let's bring this back here. I actually want there to be a straight line here for the kitchen, but then I want a curve to appear here. Well, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to right-click on the vertex yet again. And once my graphics card has stopped playing silly what's it, we will show you what you need to set it to. There we go. We'll set that to Bezier corner. So now I've got a broken tangent there. Adaptive. I've got a broken tangent so that the flat can actually have these rather wonderful sort of organic shapes whilst at the same time, let's say for example we want a curve in there, whilst at the same time giving me a straight line here. So I've got this kind of this broken tangent effect going on that's given me a very, very nice look and feel to what I'm doing. So these handles and these tangents are going to be very, very useful. They're things that we're going to explore uh, a little bit later on in some of our other tutorials. For the moment, though, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this one back to a corner vertex and be grateful for the flat fact that the designer who designed this flat wasn't that imaginative.